Jeff Dennis, and I'm here today at Tarpon Lodge in beautiful Pine Island, and we're in specifically Bokelia? Bokelia. Bokelia, right. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, you've been here, and your name is Rob? Right, Rob Wells. I'm uh, the general manager here at uh, Tarpon Lodge, mm -hmm. and uh, also with the company that owns uh, both Cabbage Key and the Tarpon Lodge. Okay. So I get to work at both places. Uh, Depending on what day of the week I'm, I'm now, around. Cabbage Key is your sister resort. Right. Cabbage Key is our sister resort. Uh, my parents purchased that property back in the late 1970s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why my parents decided to move a three-year-old boy, which was to an <laughs> island that you can only drive to by, uh, by boat to get to school. But wow. that's what they decided to do. They were adventurous people. And uh, so we moved out to Cabbage Key in, in late 1976 specifically. And it's been a, a great to be able to be part of uh, the island out there through all these years and now here at the Tarpon Lodge as well. Wow, so you actually had to take a boat to school? I did, yeah. yeah. I don't, you don't have too many people that can uh, say they lost their homework out in the water yeah. on the way across uh, to school, but I used that probably one too many times. The dolphin ate it, right? No, yes, the dolphin, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's wonderful. Now, we haven't been over to Cabbage Key yet, but we're hoping to get over there and see the island, and I, I just can't, I, I don't know what I expected coming here, but it wasn't this. You know, this we've been around Florida and we've seen so many different parts of Florida, and every time we go, it's like a whole different, diverse area of of pop, you know population and just the feel. Yeah. And when we drove in here, we have not been to the Keys yet, but when we drove up, we went, oh, this must be what the Keys look like. When we started crossing with all the colorful stuff and yeah, I think that's probably a lot of what what this area feels like. It just has been. In some ways, passed by, in, you know, in time. I mean, this is uh, exactly what we hope people think of is is sort of a real, true, authentic old Florida experience. I think old Florida has probably been overused throughout parts of Florida everywhere now. But uh, when you come here, the idea is that you kind of take a step back into time. Yeah, um, that you have the feeling like people felt uh, generations ago when they were cruising Florida before there was all the traffic headaches and high rises that you see in, in most of the coastline of Florida. But you don't see this here at all. And in fact, I couldn't find a traffic light. They'd have no traffic lights on Pine Island. Uh, we were amazed that we're going, oh, there's got to be one. Yeah. We went down to St. James City and we drove through St. James City about as fast <laughs> as we went up to it, yeah. thinking there's more. But no, no traffic lights. And the four-way stops, everyone's kind of very nice. You take your turn and you go. Right. That's kind of how they do it. And sometimes during season, I think, you know, maybe a traffic light would be a good idea, but you don't want to say that too loud out here on the island because uh, the islanders really love the idea of being in a place where they can avoid things like traffic. Yeah. And it looked like there was a lot more of local businesses. I, I didn't see any kind of chain business until I hit like the center going towards St. James. Right. And then you saw yeah. some of the necessities you have to have. I, I think that's probably part of it. And that grew really naturally on, on the island of Pine Island. It's actually uh, one of the largest islands on the west coast of Florida, um, but there are no beaches on it. No. So I think because of that, people were attracted to, in this area, to Sanibel and Captiva, they're phenomenal places. Um, but this became more of an agricultural, commercial fishing mm -hmm. kind of area. And so it was a lot more sort of inhabited by locals. And um, because of that, it, you didn't have the sort of exponential growth that you had in a lot of the other locations. And so the people that are attracted to it uh, tend to be a little bit more of the adventurous sort, looking to get off that beat path. Right. And I think uh, we've been fortunate enough to cater to a lot of those people here at the Carbon Lodge. And we were trying to imagine what it must have been like, the first person that cut the roads through here, because yeah. I don't know what they were expecting, but I mean, it, it was paradise that they found, but, but cutting through all the... The, the insects and the wildlife and yeah uh, to, to get here yeah you know you, you talk about like like my parents probably being adventurous people moving out to Cambridge key in, in the late 70s but i mean the real adventurous people obviously you know, like people that built this re is a private residence the garden mm -hmm. lodge uh, back in 1926. wow i mean no bridges yeah uh there wasn't a deep enough channel to get a barge in here <laughs> with anything to build a house with so they had to dredge the channel before they can even make landfall yeah. These are people that really wanted to develop a piece of property in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And um, probably what attracted them was this sort of great fishery we, fishery we have around Pine Island Sound. And they were looking specifically for uh, the sport fish, the tarpon, which uh, is was congregated uh, and started becoming fished heavily up around Boca Grande Pass. Mm -hmm. It became kind of this world-famous place where you could go catch this 
170, 80 pound wow. fish that would jump out of the water. And, you know, you, you caught it only for sport. And at the time that was kind of a, a novel idea. Um, people that you don't eat tarpon, they're all catch and release. Um, so it, it attracted these real adventurous sort of people that would come down from uh, all over the country to uh, these sort of far remote kind of locations to go out and, and fish for this, uh, what was becoming more and more famous by the day, sport fish the tarpon. But you can get the feel for that. You know it's a fishing community because there's boats everywhere. There's a lot of little canals cut in yeah. the streets. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's gorgeous. And there's not a lot else to do. I mean, which is a good thing. Right. You come here, you come here for a purpose. Right. You know, it's not because you want to be a real tourist. You're not going to find, you know, characters on the corners like the, the theme park area. You're going to find solitude. You're going to find peace. You're going to find harmony, nature. It's just, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, you saying that, and, and that's sort of been the idea. I moved, uh, I lived in a number of different places after I graduated from college, but uh, most recently in, in New York City. So when I moved back down here, uh, which is back home for me, uh, and I had these these friends of mine come visit. The first day, they'd kind of come in all ramped up. You know, what are we going to do? Yeah. What are we going to? I said, just wait, just wait. And then I think, you know, by the time they, you know, have a have a beer, lay back a little bit, relax. By the next day, they're kind of like, man, now I understand. Now I get this whole thing is to kind of get away from yeah. some of those things. So we we sort of proud offer uh, uh, an alternative to a lot of those kind of things. And, and for us with families, um, uh, you had mentioned the Keys. It reminds me a lot of the Florida Keys when I would go uh, with my parents in my youth. Mm -hmm. um, we would go to what were basically simple places right. and you didn't have Wi-Fi, you didn't have iPads, uh, the internet, none of that. We would go fish. You hope the place had an ice cold air conditioner to, to cool off when you got in because it was, you know, you had the longest, hottest day you could ever remember. And um, they were times where, as a family, you would be able to sit down and really communicate. And, and it was almost forced upon you because there were no other things to do. Yeah. Um, and I think now, you know, you find that to be kind of refreshing when you see all of the modern conveniences. Thinking about a family coming on a vacation where oh. they can really spend time just, you know, conversing with one another. That's that's such an important thing, as you said, and I think a lot of families have forgotten that they can still do that, mm -hmm. and the kids will find it painful at first. They do, yeah. And but all of a sudden they'll start looking around and they'll see these pelicans swooping into the water to eat. Yeah. And I don't care how old you are, you're gonna stop and go, oh my god, and yeah. watch it. We were watching pelicans at the north end of the island just fishing for about forty five minutes before we finally said, okay, let's go have lunch. Yeah. Uh, it's just great. Yeah. And, you know, we have like, you're out riding along and you see these dolphins that come up, you know, mm -hmm. cruising along the boat. And um, I just took a family out today. And yes, that's exactly what, what it was all about. It was uh, doing that kind of thing, uh, seeing, seeing nature firsthand and, and nature in its, in its wild, yeah. uh, natural environment. This isn't even, I mean, it, it almost looks like we've staged it by <laughs> the fact that these things are around, but this is just the way it is out here. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Folks, this is how it's supposed to be. You know, this is really nature. This, this isn't staged. Yeah. It's not a zoo. It's not a park. This is nature. And yeah. it's, 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 you can enjoy it. You come out here by the water. The, the breeze is blowing nicely. You sit in the shade because, you know, being in Florida two years, I've learned that there's times you sit in the sun and there's times you don't sit in the sun. That's right. Yeah. In the middle of the day, you don't sit in the sun. <laughs> I can always tell the locals and the and the tourists. The tourists are all trying to get sun, and the locals are all sitting with longer sleeve shirts on, trying to stay away from the sun with some sort of high tech fishing, you know, shirt on. So, I know. Yeah, you, you can you can tell it pretty easily when you're walking around. Oh yeah, I, I still haven't gotten to that, and I go out in in sixty degree weather, and the the locals think I'm crazy because I'm out dressed like this, and I yeah. still haven't adapted to where it's cold yet. Yeah. Uh, but this is just, it's, it's a paradise. Now, there's a lot of history in this area. I've noticed that there, you have a Bible college next door that's yeah. kind of old. Yeah. And, and what was this originally? What was so, so originally this property was all just a personal fishing residence, this avid fishing couple. Um, and they were the ones that we were talking about, went to great lengths to build this house out here. Uh, we're fishing for tarpon. Um, after they departed the original settlers of the of this building the original builders um it became a number of lodges throughout history and um we are actually on the national historic registry because of the significance of the early drive up lodge now that didn't occur until they built a bridge so okay. we're talking about when they first built the place there were no bridges you had to only get here by boat um and then when they built the little bridge which was nothing more than just a sort of 
uh, hand-built, um, rickety wooden bridge that went through <laughs> that uh, funky fishing village that you now yeah. know as Matt Lachey, Matt Lachey. Uh, and not Matt Latcha. Right. Um, they built a bridge through there and that opened it up for, for early drive up tourists to come and, and kind of enjoy this real old Florida experience. And from that, um, it's evolved today into, you know, what currently the Tarpon Lodge. We have 22 units out here. Uh, we cater to individuals that come into our 150 seat restaurant uh, daily, 365 days a year. But we also do a lot of weddings events and group business that's become a, a real big part of what we do out of this location i saw a picture of the wedding how you set it up going out to the dock yeah that's just that's got to be just breathtaking yeah yeah it's, it's uh, become a, just a great venue for those kind of things actually i'd like to say that i was smart enough to have come up with this grand plan um it started that as a fishing lodge i had a good fishing buddy and he said this would be a beautiful place to get married and i said well if you can get your you know, fiance to get married at a fishing lodge. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do it for you. And they did it. And then we started just getting a lot of referrals from people that had like come to the wedding. Yeah. And it just kind of grew into to what it is today. But I think people like really love this sort of authentic, you know, uh, back to nature uh, venue. And so we've, we've been fortunate enough to do a lot of weddings. Oh, it, it's just really perfect. Uh, the sunset last night, I tell you, this was our first official Florida sun Gulf sunset. And we have tried and we've missed it and we the sun drops so fast. Let me yeah, tell you. You gotta be quick. <laughs> you gotta be quick. Like we're going, let's go get some wine. I said, no, let's just sit here and wait because we're gonna miss it. We've done this before, but we got good front row seats. And I posted on Twitter says we have front row seats for our first Florida sunset. And we sat on the dock and the two of us is like little kids watching it. And I must have taken like 120 pictures on my cell phone yeah. of various stages of the sunset. But it's just so beautiful yeah yeah it's a, it's a cool feel and everybody's asking me all the time about this green flash and i've seen a thousand sunsets and i can't ever honestly say i've seen a green flash i've seen some great sunsets i'm still looking i don't know if you saw it last no. night i'm still looking for the green the this uh legendary green flash but apparently some of these sunsets when it's all over with there's a as the sun hits the water and goes off the never never land there's a little spark of like a green flash that kind of comes out on the sky so if you see that, uh -huh. which I think is at this point potentially a unicorn, um, <laughs> then you've really hit it big out here. Um, and I don't know if it would be just a natural viewing or if that takes uh, lots of uh, adult beverages while you're viewing and then the green flash comes up. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm, I was I've been searching that. for the green yeah. flash for a while. So if he's out there, if you've seen the green flash, please let us know. Yeah, let us know if you know about what we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, adult beverages could definitely help that green flash. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. All right. We have a great resort here. You have uh, 22 rooms? 22 units. 22 yes. units. Uh, 20 rooms and two cottages on the property here that we rent out. Okay. Uh, we have a 150-seat restaurant. I know, I know you guys have had the chance to walk oh, through yeah. a and, little breakfast room. And, and, and our idea here in this location was we thought we could uh, uh, elevate the food a little bit more than what you get at most of these sort of uh, beach bar restaurant kind of locations. So we don't do any fried food here. Um, it's all uh, uh, fresh catch uh, things that we're able to bring in. Um, we try to focus a lot on as much of the local seafood as we can as we can find depending on what time yeah. of the year and uh, and the same with our, our produce and, and other products that we bring in. So that's been a really fun thing to be able to, to do in a location that I don't think all of our guests expected. Do you get a lot of local produce or whatever you can you can We do, get? but it depends a lot on the time of year. Right. So we're coming out of a, a, a very like warm time of the year um and in florida the facts are you just it's just hard to grow things when it's, it's hot certain, when it's hot yeah. and so you, you have to you know fight your way through that but in season once we can get some great products once we start getting into some of our great tomatoes that are grown locally mm -hmm. they're being shipped all over that's when i you know i think florida produce can really shine yeah um, so like any area there's there's growing season and not and, and we we like everybody else have to work to try to find uh the produce the best produce we can when the, times that it's not grown right here. What is the, what are the local fish that you get? Well, we, we have a great uh, a, a grouper mm -hmm. um, is a is a super super popular fish. Right. Um, it's sought after. A lot of people um, come down to Florida and they, they want to get grouper. And during the right times of the year, we can get some fantastic grouper. There are a number of different varieties of grouper. Um, so you've got a, a red grouper, which is which is very popular in these Gulf waters. Uh, black grouper, which are a little further offshore. Um, gag groupers. Then, then there's a number of sport fish that you can go catch, which we can't serve in the restaurant unless you catch them. But if you can cook your own catch, 
Oh, so really? that's kind of really enjoyable for our fishing guests that come in that want to go out and eat something that they caught. Mm -hmm. And those fish can be really hard to beat. That's the snook and the redfish. Okay. Both of them you won't see on a menu in Florida if it's actually been caught in Florida because those are um, uh, banned fish to serve in restaurants unless you bring it in and have the chef prepare. Wow. And I think that's really a, just a fun thing for our customers to be able to do to go mm -hmm. out, catch a fish, and then kind of eat what they caught. Yeah. Now, do you get that often? Uh, yes. We have a lot of a lot of people, in fact, as uh, last night, some of our guests were doing that. Wow. And so uh, so we try to accommodate that whenever possible because we know that's a really special, cool thing for our guests that are staying with us. That is. That, that is really a great experience, and it just adds to the beauty of, of the experience of staying here. You know, I, I love the room we have. It's just very well appointed, and we have that little balcony. And as soon as we got here, both of us went right to the balcony. There was a breeze, and we're just watching. Oh, this is just it's unbelievable. You get a presence, and, and every time I go someplace in Florida, it's it's different. Every place I go has, and you're talking about old Florida, mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot to convey with what we see. I mean, in the city in Orlando, it's definitely not old Florida anymore. Right. A lot of it's been mm -hmm. built up new. We go to these places and we stay in these family-run uh, units like you have here, uh, properties, and you can tell there's a difference from a chain hotel. And, and I don't know why anyone would stay at a chain if you had a place like this. Now, granted, there's no chains there, right. but even traveling around Florida, if you can find a place with a local flavor, with proprietors that actually own the property and live close by, if not on it, and care about their guests and you know I found you through Superior Small Lodging mm -hmm. and they have these standards and I see you just got your new plaque in your white glove yeah. plaque too yeah. they were hanging that up yeah. but that have standards it's just I don't understand why you would go anywhere else yeah well I appreciate you saying that and that's uh, that's what we hope is that these are properties that are probably you know they're not cookie cutter each room's a little huh. bit different and that's because it was an old house that was built as a personal residence that's been converted um, but it gives you that feel of sort of a grand old house. And, um, you know, it, it, to me, we've hit it right if people get up and are able to come downstairs, have a coffee, um, relax, potentially meet another guest or two in the dining room and have a chance to see where those people are from, have a little bit of conversation, and, um, and then go out fishing or birding or go to the beach or mm -hmm. whatever it is they want to do. Or better yet, have a book and go sit on the dock and just, spend eight hours getting away from everybody and yeah. turn their phone off. Uh, you know, those are the kind of guests that I think that we really, that when they get here, they found what they're looking for and we're able to really provide, you know, an experience for them. And you have a nice swimming pool too. We're actually going to hit the pool after yeah, this nice. be before dinner, before cool. we get ready for dinner. So, you know, there's so much to do. If you get bored, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. If you can't reconnect with something here, shame on you. I mean, it's really, it's something everyone needs to do. And I think it's something everyone needs to do on a regular basis. This shouldn't be a once a year trip. I mean, you need to unplug, reconnect, and rejuvenate at least once a month. I mean, at least, if not more. I mean, you, you do it all the time, I would imagine, because you're here in this environment. So I'm sure running the business is quite hectic and gets yeah. time consuming. I try to remind myself of that. You know, when I'm running in, in our other properties about four miles from here by boat, um, I try to remind when I'm caught up in this hectic day to day thing. I have young kids, and like everybody, you know, you just have all the things that life brings. And uh, when I go back and forth, I try to just stop the boat every now and then and say, Look, this is paradise. Yeah. And I've been lucky enough to be able to work in it. And I try to remind myself of that every time I go anywhere. Um, and, and I think that's when I have my moment where yeah. I'm able to do kind of just what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, and we'll get them. You know, we'll be just coming up in here. It's that we're driving up. I tell you what, the real moment when we drove up in, in uh, I come to say, Mac, Matt Lachey. Matt Lachey. Yeah. It was gorgeous. But when we passed that tiny little post office, yeah, it was like, yeah. we wanted to jump right out and take pictures because it, it's just like it didn't belong there. It was this small little post office. Yeah, it's in a the little middle Pineland of nowhere. Post office. Yeah. And, the, and the people say, well, what is the town of Pineland? I said, well, it's only a town because there happens to be the smallest little post office you'll ever see uh, there. And I guess, you know, maybe a couple houses around, but it's, it's a pretty neat little spot. That was cool. And we stopped and Lisa went in. We just went on the way back today to talk to the postmaster yeah. and they were closed for lunch. Right. <laughs>
Yeah, they, yeah, I get stamps there because it's so enjoyable, the experience of going there as opposed to like any other post office oh, you'll yeah. ever go in your life. When you go in there, it's this little like one room spot yeah. and you kind of get to know the people that are working in and out of there. And uh, yeah, but you can't go during lunch. <laughs> I know. They will be closed. They were closed. <laughs> that was so funny. I love it. I mean, I, that's, that's how we're supposed to live. Yeah. It's not supposed to be at our convenience. It's supposed to be we're living and right. we're we're living with each other and we're enjoying life and and this is the place to do it. Yeah. So you know, thank you so much for having. Thank you us very here. much. Thanks for taking the time to come oh. out and uh, spend a little bit of time with us. Here. I, I absolutely love it. We we are thrilled to death to be here and you know I didn't know what to expect with Pine Island, but I it's a lot more than I ever could imagine and so quiet. I mean, it was almost I don't want to say too quiet to sleep last night, but I'm laying there going. It's absolutely nothing. I can't hear anything. Yeah. You know, so it was just really, really sweet. Uh, can't say any, enough about it. That's great. I really appreciate it. But thanks for taking the time. My to be pleasure. And thanks for talking to me. And guys, we'll see you later. And I'll have a lot of pictures and blog posts. So we hope to see you soon. While well, I'm on the road with Chef Dennis.